This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We end the hour today with the questioning of both people who testified yesterday at the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford testified into, in the morning into the early afternoon, and then Judge Brett Kavanaugh responded, though he said he did not hear her testimony in the morning. This is uh, Senate Judiciary Committee member, Democratic Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois questioning Judge Kavanaugh. Judge Kavanaugh, earlier today, Dr. Christine Ford sat in that same chair, and under oath, she said clearly and unequivocally that she was the victim of sexual assault at your hands. She answered our questions directly, and she didn't flinch at the prospect of submitting herself to an FBI investigation of these charges. We know, and I'm sure she's been advised by our attorneys, that a person lying to the FBI can face criminal prosecution. You have clearly and unequivocally denied that you assaulted Dr. Ford. With that statement, you must believe that there is no credible evidence or any credible witness that could prove otherwise. You started off with an impassioned statement at the beginning, and I can imagine, try to imagine, what you have been through or your family's been through, and I'm sure I wouldn't get close to it. Okay. But it was well, an impassioned— No, you wouldn't. I'm sure I wouldn't. It's an impassioned statement. And in the course of it, you said, I welcome any kind of investigation. I quote you. I welcome any kind of investigation. I've got a suggestion for you. Right now, turn to your left in the front row. To Don McGahn, counsel to President Donald Trump. Ask him to suspend this hearing and nomination process until the FBI completes its investigation of the charges made by Dr. Ford and others and goes to bring the witnesses forward and provides that information to this hearing. Well, I'm sure that the chairman at that point will understand that that is a reasonable request to finally put to rest these charges if they are false or to prove them if they are not. You spent two years in the White House office that approved judicial nominees. You turned to the FBI over and over and over again for their work. Let's bring them in here and now. Turn to Don McGahn and tell him it's time to get this done. An FBI investigation is the only way to answer some of these questions. So, Senator, stop, the, stop the clock. Uh, this committee is, is running this hearing. Not the White House, not Don McGahn, not even you as a nominee. Uh, we're, we are here today because Dr. Ford asked for an opportunity here. I know you did too as well. In fact, maybe even before she did. We're here because people wanted to be heard from charges that they all thought were unfair or activities like sexual assault was unfair. So I want to assure Senator Durbin, regardless of what you say to Senator Don McGahn, we're not suspending this hearing. That was Senate Judiciary Committee Chair Chuck Grassley responding to Senator Dick Durbin. Not one of the 11 Republican senators on the Senate Judiciary Committee, who are all white men—there's never been a Republican woman in the history of the Senate Judiciary Committee—not one of these 11 men questioned Dr. Blasey Ford directly, instead ceding all their time to Arizona sex crimes prosecutor Rachel Mitchell, who Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell called a female assistant. Mitchell was also scheduled to question Judge Kavanaugh on behalf of the Republican senators, but they quickly stopped her line of questioning after she asked Judge Kavanaugh about details of parties and gatherings he attended in the summer of 1982. Do you still have your uh, calendar, the calendars there? I do. I would like you to look at the July 1st entry. Yes. The entry says, and I quote, go to Timmy's for skis with Judge, Tom, PJ, Bernie, and Squee? Squee. Okay. It's a to what does, that's a nickname. Okay. To what does this refer and, and to whom? So uh, it first says Tobin's house workout. So that's one of the football workouts that we would have uh, that uh, Dr. Fenizio would run. Uh, for guys on the football team uh, during the summer. So we would be there. That's usually six to eight 
or so, kind of till near dark. Uh, and then it looks like we went over to Timmy's. You want to know their last names too? Um, I'm happy to do it. If you could just identify, uh, is, is Judge, Mark Judge? It is. And is PJ, PJ Smith? It is. During his answer, Brett Kavanaugh confirmed he attended this gathering on July 1st, 1982, with Mark Judge and P.J. that's Patrick Smith, two of the same people identified by Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. But Rachel Mitchell, the sex crimes prosecutor, brought in by the Republicans, never got a chance to ask a follow-up round of questions. Soon after, Senator Lindsey Graham jumped in, becoming the first Republican to directly question Brett Kavanaugh, and then the others followed suit. Graham began by going after his Democratic counterparts. If you wanted an FBI investigation, you could have come to us. What you want to do is destroy this guy's life, hold this seat open, and hope you win in 2020. You've said that, not me. You've got nothing to apologize for. When you see Sotomayor and Kagan, tell them that Lindsey said hello, oh, because I voted for them. I would never do to them what you've done to this guy. This is the most unethical sham since I've been in politics. And if you really wanted to know the truth, you sure as hell wouldn't have done what you've done to this guy. Are you a gang rapist? No. I cannot imagine what you and your family have gone through. Boy, y'all want power. God, I hope you never get it. I hope the American people can see through this sham, that you knew about it and you held it. You had no intention of protecting Dr. Ford. None. She's as much of a victim as you are. Brett Kavanaugh's drinking habits came up repeatedly during Thursday's hearing, including by the judge himself. My friends and I sometimes got together and had parties on weekends. The drinking age was 18 in Maryland for most of my time in high school and was 18 in D.C. for all of my time in high school. I drank beer with my friends. Almost everyone did. Sometimes I had too many beers. Sometimes others did. I liked beer. I still like beer. But I did not drink beer to the point of blacking out and I never sexually assaulted anyone. Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar later questioned Kavanaugh about his drinking. Okay, drinking is one thing, but the concern is about truthfulness. And in your written testimony, you said sometimes you had too many drinks. Uh, was there ever a time when you drank so much that you couldn't remember what happened or part of what happened the night before? No, I, I, no, I remember what happened and I think you've probably had beers, Senator, and, and so... So I, you're saying there's never been a case where you drank so much that you didn't remember what happened the night before or part of what happened? That's, you're asking about, yeah, blackout. I don't know, have you? Could you answer the question, Judge? I just, so you, that's not happened. Is that your answer? Yeah, and I'm curious if you have. I have no drinking problem, Judge. Yeah, nor do I. They then went to a break, and after returning from recess, Judge Kavanaugh apologized to Senator Klobuchar. I want to turn now to Democratic Senator Kamala Harris questioning Brett Kavanaugh. Judge Kavanaugh, have you taken a professionally administered polygraph test as it relates to this issue? Uh, no, the I'll do whatever the committee wants. Of course, those are not admissible in federal court, but I'll do whatever the committee wants. They're not admissible in federal court because they're Thank not you. reliable, as you, you. as you know. So you've not taken one. Right. Um, all three of the women who have made sworn allegations against you have called for an independent FBI investigation into the claims. You've been asked during the course of this hearing by four different members by my count at least eight times today. Um, and also earlier this week on national television, whether you would call for the White House to authorize an FBI investigation. Each time you have declined to do so. Now, you know, I know you do, that the FBI uh, is, is an agency of men and women who are sworn and trained law enforcement, who in the course of conducting uh, background investigations on nominees for the Supreme Court of the United States and others um, are charged with 
conducting those background investigations because they are sworn law enforcement and they have the expertise and the ability and the history of doing that. So I'm going to ask you one last time. Are you willing to ask the White House to authorize the FBI to investigate the claims that have been made against you? Well, I'll do whatever the committee wants, of so, course. And I've heard you say that, but the I've, not, I've, not heard you ask, I've not heard you answer a very specific question that's been asked, which is, are you willing to ask the White House to conduct an investigation by the FBI to get to whatever you believe is the bottom of the allegations that have been levied against you? The FBI would gather witness statements. You have Sir, the witness it's, it's, statements. It's, it, they don't I'm not, make... I don't want to debate with you how they do their okay. business. I'm just asking, are you willing to ask the White House to conduct such an investigation? Because as you are aware, the FBI did conduct a background investigation into you yes, before we were aware of these most recent allegations. So are you willing to ask the White House to do that? And say yes or no, and then we can move on. I've had six background investigations over 26 years. Sir, as it relates to the recent allegations, are you willing to have them do it? The, the, the witness testimony is before you. No witness who was there supports that I was there. Okay, I'm going to take that as a no and we can move on. Mm -hmm. You have said um, in your opening statement you characterized these allegations at a, as a conspiracy directed against you. Um, I'll point out to you that Judge Justice now, Neil Gorsuch, was nominated by this president. Um, he was considered by this body just last year. I did a rough kind of analysis of similarities. You both attended Georgetown Prep. You both attended very prestigious law schools. You both clerked for Justice Kennedy. You were both circuit judges. You were both nominated to the Supreme Court. You were both questioned about your record. The only difference is that you have been accused of sexual assault. How do you reconcile your statement about a conspiracy against you with the treatment of someone who was before this body not very long ago? I, I explained that in my opening statement, Senator. Um, look at the, the evidence here, the, the calendars, look at the witness statements, look at Ms. Kaiser's statement. Okay. That was Kamala Harris questioning Judge Kavanaugh. Uh, before his opening statement and the questions, uh, the Democratic senators talked to and questioned uh, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. This is Connecticut Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal. I have found your testimony powerful and credible, and I believe you. You're a teacher, correct? Correct. Well, you have given America an amazing teaching moment, and you may have other moments in the classroom, but you have inspired and you have enlightened America. You have inspired and given courage to women to come forward, as they have done to every one of our offices and many other public places. You have inspired and you have enlightened men in America to listen respectfully to women survivors and men who have survived sexual attack. And that is a profound public service, regardless of what happens with this nomination. And so the teachers of America, the people of America, should be really proud of what you have done. Let me tell you why I believe you. Not only because of the prior consistent statements and the polygraph tests and your request for an FBI investigation and your urging that this committee hear from other witnesses who could corroborate or dispute your story. But also, you have been very honest about what you cannot remember. And someone composing a story can make it all come together in a seamless way, but someone who is honest, I speak from my experience as a prosecutor as well, is also candid about what she or he cannot remember. The senators on the other side of the aisle have been silent 
this procedure is unprecedented in a confirmation hearing. We end today with Democratic Senator Dick Durbin questioning Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. Last night, the Republican staff of this committee released to the media a timeline that shows that they've interviewed two people who claim they were the ones who actually assaulted you. I'm asking you to address this new defense of mistaken identity directly. Dr. Ford, with what degree of certainty do you believe Brett Kavanaugh assaulted you? 100 percent. 100 percent. That was Dr. Christine Blasey Ford being questioned by Senator Durbin. And that ends our highlights of the Senate Judiciary Committee hearing, historic moment. The Senate Judiciary Committee is scheduled to vote today on the confirmation of Judge Kavanaugh. That does it for our show, Democracy Now! produced with the help of Mike Burke, Renee Feltz, Nermeen Shea, Carla Wills. Special thanks to Julie Crosby. I'm Amy Goodman.